but nothing else around there to the left. Okay, let battle commence. Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Well, coming up in this episode, I'm back over at the shed. I've checked on the calendar today and it was the 2nd of February the last time I was there. This film was made on the 25th, so it's high time I went back over there and just checked for some lurking unwanted creatures that could be around the sheep and also around Mrs. Farmer's duck pond. Come across to the shed with me now. Let's go and have a look, see what happened this evening. Well, there's me saying they were going to definitely not come from the left hand side, and that one most certainly did. Once again, that's showing that. Now, I'm going to do something now. A chap called Kiel, and I hope I pronounced your name right, Kiel from Norway, asked me why I always go out straight away and pick up the body of a fox. Now I think that was a vixen because it was shortly before I shot her, it looked like she squatted down to have a pee. So on his advice, I'm going to leave her there and see if her mate is not far behind. So Kiel, thank you very much for that um, tip. Let's just see if it works. So that's the view from my griffin and the white object in the field is a Canada goose body that I shot last night and just to the right of it is my caller up on a post. Now far over to the right hand side about 700 yards I noticed something moving across its speed across the field and that is without doubt a fox. Uh, obviously the way it's moving. Uh, I keep an eye on this fox and it does go out of sight on that hedgerow across on the left hand side so will it appear? Who knows? So this is our mate that's come through that hedgerow right at the top end of the field, about 280 yards away. Just about to pass that gate which is 170 yards away. Hey! 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 Not listening. Hey! Not listening. He's in that. He ain't going to go far. He's down there. There he is. There's hot contents left on the hedge there. You can just about see on the right hand side as well. That little chap wasn't going to stop, was he? I'm going to leave that for a bit and then go and pick him up. He ain't going to go go very far from there. So I'll put a rangefinder on that now over to that corner of the field where I just shot him. So that's 135, 133 yards to that area where I lost sight of him. So let's have a walk round now to the other side of that tree but first go to fox number one. So this was fox number one which I think is probably a vixen. Now I think I saw a 
doing a bit of a scent mark. So this one was about five past nine. Bit of a mess, so I'm not going to go and have a look at that because that is all blown to pieces. But um, I will confirm what that is once I've had a look at it. Well, that's the Vixen that um, I shot first of all just after nine o'clock. Um, I've had to sit her like that because it, the bullet virtually disemboweled her. So that's that one. Now I'm going to go have a walk along the hedgerow and see if I can find that one I've just shot now. Right, so that's the tree there that this fox was down on my right hand side of and I saw it bouncing around in the hedge. And there's the fox. Now I reckon again this is going to be a vixen. Oh dear, that's going to be another messy one. So what I should have to do is the same as I did with the last one, take it back and just position it so it's not on a mess. But I'm going to say without a doubt that that was a vixen because I'm pretty sure I saw her doing a bit of a squat. Just make sure there's no other lights. So I'm not going to go that side of it because that again, one of Dan's bullets has made an absolute monster job of that. So there we go, that'll be that one. Get that one put back with the other one. Okay, so there's the tree. So all she done was gone through that hedge, as I thought. Well, that's now 11.30 and I think it was about eight o'clock when I got here. Um, so it's not too bad. Um, it's always been a bit steady and sort of normally around sort of 10 o'clock when they've turned up. So I think the first one was just after nine. Obviously that one, about half an hour ago, that I just shot the second one. Um, to be honest, I was actually sort of dozing off, so I, it was only by luck I saw that one coming down the hedge, because I was thinking about packing up. But a um, long, long week this week at the gun shop, following last week's shooting show, we were tidying up and reordering stock. So uh, it's been worthwhile. I'm sure the farmer will be very happy. Uh, I forgot my cup tonight, so I'm drinking half pint mugs full of Horlicks and hot chocolate so I'm just going to sit here now for another sort of 25 minutes and just keep a look out I've got the coaxer playing I'll put a picture of that what it looks like um, it's been quite successful here before so I thought I'd give it a try um, no luck with the idea that uh, Kiel from Norway said about leaving the uh, the dead fox out as bait for a follow on fox nothing happened that was well over an hour um, so by shooting that second one, that's when I decided I'd go and pick them up. second one was quite easy to find, obviously you could follow it through the hedge after it had been shot. It was sort of dancing around in there um, and it, it had gone out of the hedge on the opposite side of the hedge line in the field, virtually on the same line as where it was shot, so very easy to find. Uh, devastating bullet um, trauma from Dan's bullets. Um, shot them both on... Uh, the back side of the diaphragm so where all the guts and everything are and the hydrostatic shot that those bullets give just completely blow them to pieces so um, not the nicest things to look at or pick up but um, you'll see that on the video that I'll show from both down in the barn but where the car's parked but um, excellent bullets I cannot fault those bullets that Dan's making for me um, and so far we've had 11 from this field this year so 25th of February today and 11 foxes just from sitting here not moving around so really happy with that. Alright I'm going to get on with my half a pint of Horlicks and uh, might see you a bit later on. Well I've had to lay those like that because uh, Dan's bullets had completely disemboweled both of those that's the problem when you shoot and hit them behind the diaphragm I'd see all the guts it's just hydrostatic shot with that bullet so uh, both of them have uh, been made quite a mess so that's the only way I can really make a photograph or a video of them both but um, two nice vixens almost identical in size so I'm wi a wide awake now I'm gonna go back in the shed for another hour I think well, I didn't do an hour, I did about 25 minutes for packing up and leaving these two little presents for the farmer this morning. 
Thank you very much for watching the video. Please show your support by clicking on that subscribe and smashing that notification bell. Coming up, I shall be featuring on the shooting channel with my boss, David Florent, and he's going to be teaching me how to shoot my Benelli M2. That's going to be fun. He's going to be well out of his comfort zone. See you then. Cheerio.